Aha. Good. Is it a fat cup? Ooh. Oh, is it a skinny cup? Ooh. A look at this tag. Oh, I love this chrome. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. In this video, we are looking at why graffiti and street artists should consider taking photographs in raw format. Hello, my name is Airborne Mark. I'm a London-based street artist passionate about painting origami. In this videography series, I'm sharing my professional expertise, how you can improve the production of your graffiti and street art video and photography. That was a mouthful for, of our intro. Now my full frames are recording here, so uh, we are going to rely on B-roll again to talk about the equipment. So let's read off Wikipedia what RAW format is. A camera RAW image file contains minimally processed data from the image sensor of a digital camera. Normally the image is processed by a RAW converter in a wide gamut internal color space where precise adjustments can be made before conversions to a positive file format such as TIFF or JPEG for storage, printing or further manipulation. So in layman's term, raw format is a file which is not ready to be displayed either on your phone or on your computer uh, without processing it first in software like Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop camera uh, raw. Whenever you take photos on your camera, uh, in a JPEG mode, in a traditional mode. These photos are simply compressed. When those photos are baked or flattened or processed within the camera, it means loads of data is just discarded. Just as a comparison, when you take a raw file from ASPC camera, it's about 24 megabytes. And when you take a raw file uh, from a full frame camera, as with my A7R3, it's about 42 megabytes. So you can see there is so much data contained within that file and it gives you ability for you to precisely manipulate it for the best results. Enough of terminology. Why does it matter? As you know, many a time, our pieces are very short-lived. Striving for the best possible capture in photographs of my final pieces, what I'm actually doing, I'm archiving my own work at the best possible quality. I started capturing my work in raw format even before Instagram came about. And yes, indeed, once you upload it to uh, Instagram and social media, all those files are compressed even more and they are downgraded and degraded furtherly. Why? Why is it important to me? Because at some point I know that my work will be printed either as a book and so on and so forth. At any given time I can pull out you know, all those photos and I can edit them without any loss of the original file. Basically, I'm future-proofing my work for decades. Many a time when I'm taking the final pictures of my just finished murals, the light is already dimming. I rush against the dying light. I always think when is the last moment for the most optimal light conditions to take the final picture of my mural. Raw format has dynamic range which is much greater than baked JPEG file. So whenever uh, it's maybe too dark already to take a photo, when you shoot it in raw, even more on a tripod, you can bring up all those mid-tones and shadows and blacks 
to a very great capacity and you'll be surprised how much you can uh, rescue when you, you would think it's too dark. So shooting in raw format for street artists who specialize in hyper-realistic pictures is very important because the data captured within that format allows you to manipulate the hue, the saturation and luminance of each color. When I'm shooting my origami references here at my folding station, I really do it painstakingly. So following that train of thought, when I'm capturing the final photo of a set piece and I want to make sure the colors I use in my paint are represented accurately. I'm really color obsessed and I'm very sensitive to those subtle variations of color. That's a paramount when you want to represent your work in print or give a true reflection of what it actually was at the moment you finished it. And it drives me crazy when people use filters on my murals. I spend like six hours finessing all those colors. Don't add a filter on the photo, go! So let's talk about hardware because raw format capacity as well as hardware, they go hand in hand and they should be considered together. I bring two cameras to the wall, the first one being an ASPC and the second one being a full frame. I started taking photos of my final pieces on my NEX6. This is second ASPC's camera from Sony, 2011, right? On a kit lens. The lens, the sharpness of it. Mm. Then I moved to the better camera, Sony 6300. And then I would take my G lens on this ASPC camera because of its sharpness and aperture, right? Then I moved on to my first full frame camera, which is, I'm still using it here. And then I moved on to my latest camera, which is a photo camera, which is a, a Sony A7R3. And now I'm shooting on G Master lenses exclusively. I'm a bit over the top, of course, because I am a professional photographer, videographer in my day-to-day -day nine to five job here in London. And I totally understand not all of you will have an access to such equipment and it's not necessary. It doesn't mean I want you to go out now and spend all this money on Sony G Master lenses with the latest full frame cameras. I understand I'm in a different position than you. I just want to encourage you to start thinking about documenting your street art and graffiti on another level. If you're working on ASPC camera, just upgrade to a better lens, which is sharper than the kit lens. In my previous videos, by now, you have heard me talking about how many times I smashed my ASPC cameras, my kit lenses, because graffiti painting environments are hazardous environments. These are not controlled environments whatsoever. So the costs of damage are different. Smashing this, right? Smashing this, gone. It hurts. That camera is broken, it's dead, right? So even as a professional, I don't want to be in, a, in that position when I smash or destroy my full frame cameras with G Master lenses when I'm painting. So I, I take it out only, solely, only just for the final photo. I just wanted that to be clear why there are two cameras in my bag. <laughs> Lastly, another rant, you know, like smartphones are great, right? This piece of cheap glass, whatever your latest iPhone is, I hope you are watching it, you know, in 2034. When iPhone 58 Mega Plus Deluxe comes out, it will only have this bloody piece of plastic in front of it. Nothing can compete with, with real glass, with lens system. I just want to encourage you to take ownership 
of documenting your own work and be obsessive about it. You, in 20 years time, will be grateful to yourself right here that you took that step and invested in your photography video gear. It's all about legacy, legacy. My middle name is Airborn Legacy Mark and nothing speaks legacy better than high quality prints of your own murals. You can only take out what you put in. The sharpest lenses, full frame cameras in combination with raw format allows you the greatest end results like this. Why don't you check out my online shop and see what's available there to get you yourself one of my original prints of many murals I've done over the years. One of the perks of owning a full frame camera and shooting in RAW uh, format is that you can easily make a print yourself of your work and you'll be in charge of color representation in those prints. So everything that you ever see on the display is in RGB color profile, right? All these JPEGs are baked in. Whenever you print anything, the color space is different. CMYK, right? Which is color processing for print. And in order to represent the, the colors of your finished murals in CMYK, having that raw format will allow you to do the necessary post-processing to achieve that. I know it sounds super technical and way over the top, but let me tell you the story of this mural I painted in 2015 here in London. This origami Buffalo Bill mural was one of the first murals that really put me on the map. And I initially released it as this less than A4 custom Lise print, high quality reproduction that I actually shot on my um, ASPC uh, camera in raw format. The size, not that impressive, it's more like collectible, affordable print. On this scale, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between what hardware you've used initially and you know whether it was raw or not. The power of raw format is the more data you capture at the entry point, then you have more to work with. And the print was released in 2015. Then, last year, out of the blue, I was contacted by a business from Australia who actually asked for a custom size of this print. They asked for A0 format. Let me show you what A0 format is. It doesn't even get into the frame, right? The power of raw format is that it's indestructible. So I got back to the original raw file, the source file I had, and after six years of more skills, more experience with color correction and photo addition and print preparation, it allowed me the freedom to re-edit it to this new output. That's what I mean future proofing of your work is. But legacy is here and you are completely in charge of it. Raw format is the key, trust me. As always, I hope you found this video exceptionally beneficial and you can walk away with confidence on how to improve your photo, video, graffiti capturing game. Also, being so obsessive about the quality of your work being represented in the world is so important because you don't want to be relying on others to guarantee that. I'm very obsessed about it and I think it's a good thing because I believe that nobody should be more passionate about your own work than you yourself as an artist. This is not a sponsored video however down in the description you can find affiliate links and help me uh, grow my channel. I'll see you in the next video folding, painting, scrunching, burning when you can see all this knowledge in action. My name is Airborne Mark, Origami Riots, folding all day, every day, and I'm out.